Alright, welcome everyone to my very first cosplay crafting video. Today I'll be showing you how I made my strawberry cow ears for my strawberry cow photo shoot. This is going to be part one, so I'm going to cover patterning, EVA foam, base, and fur shaping. Uh, part two will comprise of the painting and decorating, so I hope you enjoy! Thank you! Alright, so right here I'm going to start off with a paper pattern of our cow ears and I'm tracing the other one onto another sheet of paper. From there I'm going to cut it out and there we have two little paper cow ear patterns. So next I'm going to transfer them onto uh, EVA foam. I believe this EVA foam is um, four millimeters and I'm going to be tracing them over with Sharpie. Uh, as you can see my Sharpies were out of ink <laughs> so I kind of had to jam the marker in there so it's more of an engraving rather than a, a drawing. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife, box cutter, craft knife, whatever you like to call it. And very important, make sure your craft knife is super sharp. So you can see me here sharpening it on a sanding block. Perfect, perfect. Nice and sharp. So this will avoid any dragging within the EVA foam because you want those nice clean cuts. So here I am sharpening again and cutting out my ear shapes from the foam. I like to keep it all in one simple motion so I can have really smooth curves. And there you go, two little EVA foam ears. Alright, so the next little section I had made a couple of test cuts because I wanted to have the outer edges of the ear sort of bend in to be more cone slash ear shaped. <laughs> So I practiced on a little scrap piece of EVA foam. So now I'm going to transfer that onto the actual ear shape. Sharpening it, my knife as always, keeping it nice and nice and sharp, nice on point. Perfect. Alright, so there was that first initial cut. Pretty fast, pretty fast. And there's the other cut. So I didn't fully put my knife all the way down so I kind of kept my pressure out so it didn't it didn't go all the way through next you see me creating like little side lines along each cut keeping my knife at a 45 degree angle so that way I can make a like a channel of EVA foam like a little after we had our ear cut out and sort of shaped let's get on with the fur so make sure your fur is also already facing one direction. You see I marked little arrows on here to uh, indicate the direction of the fur. Um, side note, I did I did fully forget about, forget about this. So <laughs> you're gonna see my struggle in a little bit. Anyways, here's me placing down the ears and tracing them down with my marker. A, a new one with fresh ink this time. And I'm also allowing just a little bit of seam allowance around it. Even though we're not gonna be sewing um, I still like to have it. <laughs> also, craft knife, always. Craft knife is, is the best for furs, for foam, for anything. So get yourself a good craft knife. So the reason why you want to use a craft knife instead of scissors is when you're cutting fur, you don't want to accidentally trim it or like cut it, cut the fur shorter. You want to make sure you're just getting the fibers and that piece of fabric on the back of the fur. So everything is one big cohesive piece. Here I am, cutting out the ears. Peeling them right out. <laughs> there we have it. Two furry ears. And you can see my first mistake right here. Um, <laughs> which is realizing that, oh shit, ears, there's an inner and an outer ear and you have to flip them. And I did not. So now I have two fur pieces going the opposite direction, but don't worry. This fabric is very forgiving. So I was able to take the other piece off and brush the fur the other way, the opposite direction. 
and for whatever reason that seemed to do pretty decently, although some furs cannot be as forgiving. So make sure you just keep that in mind, the ear arrow position and uh, inner and outer ears. Here's, here's me figuring it out. There you go. There she goes. She brushing. Yeah. It's not the, the cleanest result, but when you fuck up, you fuck up. And you only have limited number of supplies. So, there we go. Two little fuzzy clouds. So once you get done, you're gonna, of course, repeat that step for the other ear. I'm only showing one ear at a time, because... That makes the most sense. All right, I'm gonna take my contact cement, she was just show, and I put it in this tiny little bottle, which is super helpful for like getting, for squeezing out into smaller little sections. So that cut that we made last time, I'm gonna put some contact cement inside of the thing, inside of the, the cut, and I am gently folding the ear over and sticking the cuts together, sort of making that uh, curved shape that ears have. Here I am heating up the EVA foam so it's easier to work with. I'm just using a normal blow dryer because I don't have the heat gun. <laughs> yep, there we go. We got a nice curvy ear. I'm not sure how much the EVA foam helped on this one, so you might want to skip that step. But I left it in because that's what I did. Even more heat shaping until I got a shape that I enjoyed. All right, now it's time to attach the fur to our EVA foam ear. I'm using contact cement. Um, you can use hot glue or anything you want. See me sort of like laying out, spreading out with a piece of EVA foam, gently laying it on top and sticking it to the EVA foam. It creates a very nice seal, I will say. I enjoy working with contact cement over EV <laughs> over EVA. <laughs> I work. I enjoy working with contact cement over hot glue because you can continue to heat up the EVA foam ear and shape and mold it, and the glue won't come off. But with hot glue, if you heat it up, it's gonna be a little bit more upset <laughs> and un unhardened, unglue. Yeah, that's the correct words. So here is the sort of big seam line that we have, and we're going to close this up with more contact cement. So just here's me putting it in the little crevice and sealing it over. This method of ear making doesn't allow for super invisible seams, so I tried my hardest to hide the seams via this method right here. Don't. Uh, glue shut the uh, very ends of the ears because we're going to be shoving our wires through there in a bit. All right. <laughs> time change. I was working on this bad boy for a long time. Here's me testing out the size of the ears. See how big they were. They're ginormous. They're huge. <laughs> I think next time if I were to make ears, I would have to decrease the size by a lot. But now we are going to cut the inner portions of the ear. I'm taking my nice sharp fabric scissors or hair cutting scissors work as well, but I'm just sort of trimming down the fur so it's nice and flat. Typically ear makers use um, like a razor or like a dog shaver to get this nice like felt look, but I don't have that and I know some people don't. So here's a method on how to get that really nice close shave line on ears. It's not gonna be even, as even as uh, a razor is, but you can try your hardest. And it's more of just like pressing the scissors against, flush against the, um, the fur and cutting until you get to the very sort of like edge of the fur. And here's me blocking out the shapes of the inner ears, keeping the inner ear fluffs sort of symmetrical and even, and also trimming down the um, fur to a, a reasonable size. Here's me, that was me removing some of the inner portions of the fur. And there I am pin cutting. Pin cutting helps make for really um, natural looking hairs because in real life hair sizes are not all the same size. 
<laughs> but yeah, here is the inner ear cut. All right, now it's time to work on the outer ear. Speed run, speed run, speed run. This outer ear was pretty simple. I just had like one little tuft near the base. And I tried to keep a little tuft at the tip, but it just didn't look good. So I ended up cutting it off. So here I am shearing off a lot of the fur, a lot of the bulk, while also keeping away that piece that I want to save for later and shape into a fluff. You can see how flat I keep the scissors against the ears, and that helps get that really close shave. To me, this part takes the longest because it's you always kind of want to change up your idea and try and make it better. But you know, once you cut, there's no coming back. So just keep that in mind for when you're uh, making your own ears. So that's the back and the front. All right, so this video got to be kind of long. <laughs> so join me for the next part where I will be painting the strawberry cow ear patterns and adding my own decorations to the ears. Um, this, to, to me, painting is the most fun, so I'm really excited to show you guys that. But yeah, uh, here's part one of shaping, you know, cleaning things up and everything. And thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. It's really helpful for the algorithm and all that fun stuff. And yeah, I'll see you guys in part two when I finish up these ears.